Good morning. This is a come eat with me video. Oh, should I get my camera set up? Hello. And um, it's actually breakfast for me. So it's morning. How are you doing? So I have got a green tea with ginger, which smells really nice. Now, this is a come eat with me video. I have got food and I'm going to be eating my food. Now, I know this sounds obvious, but I'm just giving this as a trigger warning because either if, you know, watching other people have food or what people eat is triggering for you at the moment, or if you don't like the sound of people eating, um, then this is not a video for you. Go and check out some of my other videos. But if you enjoy seeing what other people are eating and being in company of people eating and maybe joining me while you're having your food, then welcome. So um, my daughter's autistic and the sound of people eating is awful for her. She, it has a, she has a real sensory aversion to it. So I don't generally eat with her. I come and have some quiet while I'm eating um, and she's um, doing something else. So actually, so firstly, I really understand not everyone likes the sound of chewing and people eating. Um, and I, so I really understand that. But also it means that sometimes it's a time where I've got a bit of time and I can come and have a chat with you because I'm like not doing my busy mum home editing thing. I'm actually on my own. So, so I have got some yogurt here, which is the... Um, 0% fat natural Icelandic yogurt. It's really thick, I really like this. So I am spooning that into my bowl, which has in it, the point of this video is not to share what I'm eating, but there you go, I'm eating. So um, I've got some frozen berries, mixed berries, like red currants, black currants, um, blackberries and strawberries, I think. Um, oh, there might be a couple of cherries in there. And it's on a, a sort of protein mug cake, which I did in the microwave, which is chocolate, because I was really craving that this morning. And I think because my daughter made a chocolate mug cake last night, and I was like, oh God, that looks good. <laughs> I was really craving that, so I made like a sort of proteiny one this morning. Mm. That was really well, it was really tasty. Um, so I really like this combo. I've got a little uh, Saksuma. So do I want that or not? Maybe. No, I'm going to pee that. So, um, so that's my little breakfast. And, and like I said, this is just a good time where I can come and chat because actually I really like to connect over food, but I like calm and peace when I'm eating. I don't like noisy, busy environments. I'm not really that big on eating now. I don't mind, but I prefer being in a like a calm space. But I do like being with others when I eat, and something I'm not so much these days because my daughter doesn't like to be together when we eat, so it isn't something I do all the time. But um, what's I going to say about that? It's just nice to connect with you while I'm eating. But also, I think um, because I've come from a place where now arranging my uh, sex room into weird little piles of segments. Um, because I've come from a place where there were so many foods that I was restricted on, and now I can enjoy them. It's nice to enjoy them, and it's nice to be visible enjoying them, because maybe it will give you a contemplation on whether it's something you could actually enjoy. Mm. Again, or for the first time and feel comfortable with physically in your body and in your digestion and mentally and emotionally as well. So I've got yogurt. Now dairy is something that I did not eat for a really long period of my life, like, I don't know, my adult life really. And now I can eat and eat pretty much every day, eat some sort of dairy, quite a lot of it. I really enjoy my dairy. And I feel great with it. And it was almost an overnight shift for me that I incorporated it back into my diet and felt great using the techniques that I teach. And 
I had tried to reintroduce dairy a few other times in the past and always had my symptoms come back. So when I talk about the impact of the psyche on how we, our body deals with the food, it's not just to like a silly thought that, you know, oh, I can't eat dairy and so I've blocked it out of my life and I've like excluded that. I actually had real physical symptoms from eating it. Um, and now I do. So I had asthma. I would get like some eczema patches and I would get spots like in the hormonal zone, like around the chin, under the nose, like big zits come up within a couple of days. Um, do I have anything else that was from the dairy? Mm, I think they were the things, but the asthma was instant. If I ate yogurt, particularly yogurt, was really trigger. If I ate yogurt, I would like be, you know, really, you know, wheezing. Not a subtle thing. Um, and now nothing. And so the work was, like I teach, a shift in my psyche, bringing into my conscious my beliefs, my thoughts, my stresses around dairy and doing the work to release them and telling myself it's safe to eat dairy, I feel comfortable to eat dairy, dairy is good for me, lots of people are really nourished by dairy and doing that work and now I can enjoy it. So what else have I got? Um, so berries, right? Berries were not a difficult thing for me to um, bring into my diet again I would probably always have them to a, a little degree but I did have a lot of fruit phobia um, from having a low carb lifestyle of, in various ways you know keto, Atkins, um, what else what's the other one I can't think keto, Atkins, just low carb um, Carnivore, um, oh, another one that I can't get. Oh, paleo. <laughs> um, trying all those, you know, and and you learn these sort of fruit fruit rules, you know, about carbs and um, and so berries is something that are usually allowed to some degree within those eating patterns, but a limit, limit, limit thing, and maybe a lot of um unspoken or spoken rules about how clean that those berries would be in terms of you know pesticides are they seasonal are they local and um, stuff like that but definitely like a carb warning would go off in my brain about fruit um and so then i would find that i would like be gaining weight or getting s or sort of hormonal problems or spots um and now i find that I really enjoy quite a lot of fruit. I think my body um, wants the fruit. So I tend to go for the same sorts of things that are just what I fancy. Berries, um, all these little saxumas, grapefruits, lemons, um, a bit of banana sometimes. Mm. And apples, I eat loads of apples. I just love apples. Um, and they just feel really good. Um, and so I still consider that I eat a, a sort of a, a naturally reasonably low carb way of eating that suits me, but I don't do it to, I don't follow rules. I don't follow macros. I, you know, I have grains and I have starches and I have fruit and I have all those things in the way that feels good for me. Mm -mm. So what else? Okay, so this is green tea. I've lots of times I've cut caffeine out of my diet. When I had green tea, I would um, get nausea. What else? Mm. I don't know. I think there was a lot of things that I didn't know. I made assumptions about. I assumed 
things that I was told about how it would impact my hormones, how it would impact my sleep, um, my digestion, um, my blood sugar, blah, blah, blah. But I can't say I, I had noted those things, but I just had that like uh, anxiety about it. But I definitely got nausea. I'd drink it, I'd feel sick. Oh, and I don't feel at all. Um, and I have whatever caffeine I feel like in a day. It doesn't impact me in any notable way at all. I have coffee, I have Diet Coke, I have green tea, whatever. So I've also got um, this protein mug cake. So this is just what I fancy for breakfast. I didn't give any thought to the fact that I was coming on this video. I was, you know, I haven't made it fancy. I haven't planned the meal. <laughs> I haven't made it fancy. She says with this big mush or stuff in a bowl, like she might have um, spooning it in, holding a bowl. This bowl was a present from my daughter. So it's more like a bowl I really love to use. Um, it was chosen very specially for me. She knows I like a big bowl. Um, and so I love it. So um, I'm now going to be gross and lick my yogurt that's on the side of the bowl. So, um, where was I? Yeah, this is just what I fancy, but I know it's just making me share the stuff that's in it that I can now really enjoy. And do you know what I want to say? Because I know, especially um, for the women who watch this, a lot of you, this is like this subconscious thought, maybe conscious, maybe subconscious, all the time is and i know i would have had this is this curiosity about how have you has your body changed specifically have you gained weight usually because you're suddenly eating these things again and the answer is no um i've opened up what i eat i've stopped far false fasting and i've actually if anything lost a bit of weight my goal was not to lose weight my goal was to heal my gut um, but where I've relaxed, actually, oh, my body settled into probably the lowest weight it's been in a, in a really long time. And it's definitely the lowest weight it's ever been in a where I'm in a natural, comfortable pattern where I listen to my appetite and I'm not trying to restrict or anything like that. So, um, so I just wanted to mention that. So, yeah, so this mug cake has got protein powder in it. I would never have had that before because it's way... And I thought I couldn't have dairy. And it was um, like a psyche conflict for me because it was like something I would have wanted to have because a lot of the food videos and vlogs and things I would follow, you know, um, where people eat sort of like a high protein diet and they would use these powders and I'd be envious of that. So um, I do really well with whey protein powders. Um, and it's got... Um, cacao powder in. Now there are times in my eating where eating history where I've eaten tons of cacao and times where I've excluded it. I love cacao. I love chocolate. I'm a very much a chocolate girl and I love enjoying my chocolate again. Um but it would depend what what sort of um plan way of eating I was following trying to heal what I was doing. But um, when I was when I was doing sort of like keto, low carb things, I would eat, have a lot of cacao because, you know, a lot of the recipes on keto are like um, using like almond flour and cacao and things, that, you know, to make sort of treats and things like that. And I would make a lot of smoothies with cacao in and like um, natural hot chocolates, sort of not unsweetened, stuff like that. But there... When I was trying to heal my gut, I'm just having some more yoga. Um, when I was trying to heal my gut, um, and I was reading about all the things, and I was doing my like food intolerance journals, and noting things that should be, and I'd go into the Facebook groups, and I found out about. You will find out more about my story on my channel. I'm just thinking of the things that come to my mind connected to my food. Who I'm chatting to you really, but um, if you've got any questions, just ask them. But I would note things and I'd go into Facebook groups and I, I noticed a pattern of 
what I put down to histamine intolerance, which is a big buzz thing around at the moment, histamine intolerance. Now, again, I am not making light. If you are somebody who's here because you are struggling with those symptoms, I understand those symptoms are very real. It was very real for me. I was having histamine reactions I had. You know, my lifelong history since I was a baby, I had had asthma, eczema, um, you know, allergies. You know, I was the classic histamine sufferer. And so looking to um, consider that my gut issues were connected to histamine was completely logical. Everything I was reading made sense. And I started excluding high histamine foods from my diet, which was hell, because um, a lot of them were the things that I were eating on a sort of more low carb way of eating, which I'd been doing because that was recommended for me as somebody with polycystic ovary syndrome. I'd been doing that for a long time. And then I was like, my food list was becoming quite restricted and annoying. But also then I was reading about other things. Oh, you know, if you've got trouble with histamine, maybe you've got trouble with salicylates, excuse me, and oxalates and things like this. You've probably heard all these things. And oxalates is a big thing at the moment. Mm. And there's loads of it in cacao, almond flour, other things that make all these treats, but loads in chocolate. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I have a problem with oxalates, but I did what I always do, go reading about it. Oh my goodness. I'm completely convinced, you know, on that sort of primal brain level. I I think I just convinced myself there was something there. And I started getting joint pains that seemed to be connected to when I ate oxalates. It just, you know, it sounds really silly when I'm explaining it like this, but it didn't happen in a like in a moment of awareness awareness like this it was a journey with a food journal and tracking things and reading things and piecing things together and I was getting some pain and inflammation and I and I was noting you know these things and then when I took them out and then that pain and inflammation would go away so it seemed like that was the problem you know um and so I then had a problem with oxalates and you name it, the list goes on. I talk about it all on my channel. Lectins, what else? Um, I don't know, you name it. I'd have put it on my list until I was eating like about three, what I'd have called safe foods, you know, that I felt well with and blah, blah, blah. Um, and that was the point of which I began this truly healing journey. <laughs> So there we go. What else is in my mug cake? Um, so protein powder, a little bit of baking powder, mm. which happens to be a gluten-free one just because I've still got that in the cupboard because I would have bought that in preference, but it doesn't matter to me now. Um, I eat gluten, I eat wheat, I don't have any trouble with those things. Um, and, <laughs> Excuse me, some water. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, a little um, cinnamon sweetener thing. I definitely wouldn't have had um, artificial sweeteners before. I was very holier than now about that. I would have had sometimes a little bit of um, like green leaf stevia like the powder it was like pure and wholesome enough for me to eat that <laughs> um but even that i went through a phase where i was like i wouldn't allow myself to have anything with any sweet taste i thought i had to like conquer that addiction to sweetness and all through it all this huge like a lack of trust in being able to um it's, it's just all it's just a need for control in different ways you know need for control and it's okay because we are where we are there's so many ways that that shows up in like little ways i'm always working through these things 
um, challenging myself on them. Um, you know, it's it's part of our culture, isn't it? We, you know, we have so many things since we were young. So many things that as a parent, I'm like, I wish I could. I don't I know. I'm not I wish I could go back because everything's worked out brilliantly as it is, you know. But there are lots of things that I'm working through with my daughter. I, and it, you know, I know I taught you that. I know I showed you that. I know I installed that but actually I really look at this differently now and you know and I'm, well, I'm sorry for that I'm sorry I made that difficult I'm sorry I made you anxious about that I'm sorry I had you be excluded from enjoying that etc etc and then there are still some things that it's hard for me to fully let go of and I have to be in that space too and just be self-forgiving and self-compassionate with Mm -hmm. so for me it was like healing my gut to that issues was the start of a much bigger journey to healing my relationship with food my body my weight um but even bigger than that the way we do food is the way we do life you know and it opens up so much about how how we trust how we flow where we hold on to control you know it's just such a big conversation mm. I'm, sure I'm, I'm really hungry we had a really busy big day out yesterday i was really looking forward to my breakfast i'm a real breakfast girl if, i was gonna say if i only ate one meal a day as many times in my life i have only eaten one meal a day or one meal every other day um or whatever fasting pattern i was on um and it would always be breakfast i could i could eat breakfast or breakfast and lunch preferably and then i could fast the rest of the day and it didn't bother me at all because most people talk about when they do work fasting they skip breakfast and i'm always like that's completely the wrong way around but we're all different aren't we I wake up really hungry and I want that energy. And once I've had my food, it doesn't bother me not to eat in the evening really. But um, I don't deliberately restrict that anymore at all. But I tend to eat earlier, it just suits me. Mm. Whereas my husband, he's not, and my daughter, not bothered about breakfast, not really hungry in the morning, like lots of food in the evening. Really searchable for our family. So we just honour whatever it is that we prefer, whatever we want. We come together when we come together, but we don't force any patterns. Um, and we have different ways of eating as well. My husband's pescatarian. And um, I've gone through periods of being anything and everything so i don't have a label on it now but i do eat everything including meat which he doesn't um and my daughter is the same as me that she eats whatever now but that's been a new journey for her of where i've been opening up to eating things she's been opening up to eating things that she was excluding um and you know had bad labels around because of my stuff and she's been enjoying more foods now um but like i said she's autistic and she has a lot of sensory aversions so she's quite particular about um combinations of foods textures of foods and and the way she likes to eat and um things like that so she kind of she's very much in her own in her own place with it all we just and because she's home educated um, she's never really had to deal with anything else. She's just been able to <laughs> do it her way, um, which has been, which has been really good because um, it would have been a lot of stress for her if she was forced into situations where she had to eat on another schedule or with time restraints or in front of lots of people and things like that. Um, so she hasn't had to develop that stress and anxiety in her life that a lot of kids who um 
we, we knew she was autistic when she was quite young and a lot of especially girls people don't find out until much later a lot of them adults a lot of my friends who have got children who are autistic are now sort of going oh that's interesting i do those things i think those ways i have those experiences ah oh. <laughs> and i'm um, realizing that uh, they live their whole life um, with labels of other things you know mental health struggles or just being damn difficult whatever it is they're actually autistic too so it's interesting so sad when it finishes so i've had quite a lot of my yogurt about half of the satsuma in the end quite a lot of berries it was really good um i've still got some tea left so i'll go in a minute and I hope you had a nice whatever you're having, if you're eating with me. You can check out my other Eat With Me videos on the playlist. Um, I've also got my Drink With Me videos, which are just like a short coffee break. And there's no eating in those ones. So if you don't like the eating, if you thought, oh, that was a bit gross what you didn't eat, that's fine. Um, then you can check those out and i have a tap with me playlist where i i do short little videos where i show you how to do the simple tapping technique which is part of emotional freedom techniques which is the technique that i like to share and it's how you choose a, a target a focus something that's bothering you upsetting you stressing you causing you discomfort and just tap on these acupoints on the body to soothe, bring peace into your body's energy system. It relaxes that part of the brain that's going into that fight, flight, freeze, form response and is like causing that tension and stress in your body. And it's, it's just inviting us to feel safe and to relax, even when we're focused on that thing that's causing us stress. So it's a really simple but effective and quick technique which can really take the edge off some uncomfortable feelings emotionally and physically um so that's really really useful to use and then of course if you want to hear more about my story um and the work that i do and how i use emotional freedom techniques to help you heal with your gut to butt stuff gut to butt stuff then um check that out find out a bit more then um when i hook up for an appointment you know what to do um if you're new thanks for being here big welcome do subscribe because it helps me it helps more people find us and it helps you to make sure that you see content when i put it out i try and put a lot of content out um that is what i would have wanted to hear when i was going through my healing at the beginning so i hope it supports you it's sent out with a lot of love okay that's the end of my breakfast. I'll go do my mom thing. Mom thing. Okay, have a good day. Bye.